Shabbat Shalom. Uh, today we're just talking about the promise, the promise of the Most High. Uh, of course, we know the promises of the Most High are yea and amen. But we're in another part of the scriptures today. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I want to go to Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28. And basically, it was it was a time when Apostle Paul, Apostle Shaul had to check Apostle Peter because Peter, he was sometimes eating with people, sometimes he wouldn't eat, sometimes he was just doing little things and Paul was just like, yo, you know, make up your mind, what are you going to do? And of course, you know, Peter is one of the great apostles of the Lord, he denied the Lord three times and then three times when the, when the Lord ascended he descended back he asked him do you love me and, and Peter said three times that he did and of course Peter was commissioned and did the will of the most high and um, when Peter was crucified uh, study Bible say he was crucified upside down because he felt unworthy to even be matched with uh, the Messiah with Emmanuel with Christ but um and the scriptures clearly state salvation is of the Jews and the Gentiles but uh, of the Jew first and then the Gentile and so, the thing here is that some people will, in Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, Revelation chapter 3, verse 9, Titus 1, verse 14, um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 64 to 68, uh, Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, so many things, this whole book, the, the, the book, what is the Bible called? The book of prophecy, right? Basic instructions before leaving earth, B-I-B-L-E. And, um... But a lot of times what people don't realize is that certain devout Jews in Jerusalem felt I had a little more pride because they were from Jerusalem. But James, the first chapter, talks about how, how the 12 tribes were actually scattered amongst the earth. The 12 tribes are the 12 sons of Jacob. We know Jacob's name was changed to Israel because he wrestled with God. And that's in Genesis when he wrestled with God and God wounded his hip and changed his name to Israel. Jacob had 12 sons. These are the 12 tribes of Israel, so on and so forth. Um, which is the promise, all about the promise. Abraham had Isaac, Isaac, Jacob, which is Israel. And the promise is in that lineage, according to the scriptures. Now, Galatians 3.28 says this, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So what happens is, a lot of times people just think, well, we're all one, and yes, he's, you know, but uh, the scripture also states, Jacob I love, which is Israel, Esau I hate it. And so when he says there's neither Jew nor Greek, there's neither bond nor free, which is no slavery, no free, we're all one in, in Christ. All of us are one in Christ. But what Paul is trying to express is that the, the most devout Jews cannot be disregarding the Jews that were scattered. Those are the Gentiles that were scattered amongst many nations. That's really what's going on. Because sometimes a lot of people think, everybody, you know, and they and it's, it's kind of clearly talking about that. Okay, let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. Uh, o foolish, this is Apostle Paul, O foolish Ga Galatians, who hath bewitched you? He's asking, like, who bewitched you? Who put this witchcraft on you? That ye should not, we're in Galatians, third chapter. Verse 1, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. So they saw Christ crucified and before their eyes. This only what I learn of you, receive ye the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. See, you know, we it's by faith that we're justified. But the Galatians started thinking, well, if I just, um, you know, stay with the law then I'm good that's like the laws of today you run a traffic light you know you get a ticket sometimes they got the camera light so a person would say well I never ran a red light I never did anything I'm going to heaven you're not saved by being good with the law you're saved by your faith in the Savior and the Messiah you know the one Lord one faith one baptism that's how your salvation comes through Christ, no other way. The scriptures say, if any man climb into heaven any other way, he's a thief and a robber. Okay, so, but back then the people start thinking, well, I'm keeping the law, so I'm good. And it's, no, you repent, 
You know what I mean? He'd have an ear here with the Spirit of saying, You repent and ask the Savior into your heart and fix you, cleanse you, and repent of all your sins and be made a new creature. Be in the scriptures, get in a good church that loves you, not just loves your money, and, you know, will nurture you up in the admonition and fear of the Lord and edify you by the scriptures and walking in the truth, the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. All right. I have to be brought out. So we're back in Galatians chapter 3, uh, verse 2. This only what I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. And that's Paul. Like, well, how'd you get the Spirit? You know, because you were doing all good by the law. Now check it. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Because you're doing these fleshly things. I'm being obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. But we're talking about your faith. Your faith got to be in the Most High, in the Messiah, Emmanuel, in Christ. It cannot be in your works. Okay. Galatians 3, verse 4. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it yet be in vain? Like all the stuff you're going through. I mean, does the law have heaven for you? No, it's the Messiah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got, he's on the throne and all that. Okay. He, therefore, that minister to you in the spirit and work of miracles among you, doth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Like all these miracles, you know, restoring the hand, the one, the impotent feet, and the woman bent over, and the woman at the well, and the woman with the issue of blood. He, did he heal by himself, by faith in him? He, he said, the Messiah said, do you believe I can do this? And then when he healed him, he said, look, sin no more. So was it by your works? I'm following the law correctly. I'm healed. It's not by that. But we keep the law because without law, there's transgression, there's crime, there's this and that. So the law is established. That's why we did it in, a, in another message. Do we do away with the law? No. We establish it. The law and the prophets. But now, the Messiah is here as our schoolmaster. He's the one that's, you know, it's through him. Okay? So here we go. Galatians 3. Verse 6, even as Abraham believed God as it was accounted to him for righteousness. Remember, Abraham took Isaac up and, you know what I mean, thought he had to uh, make a sacrifice. And then the ram was caught in the bush. And you know, it was one of, one of the blessed stories, okay? Galatians 3, verse 7. Now ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto. Now let's get this, this heathen word because in some... Like in NIV, heathen will say Gentiles, okay? Because we, we already know the heathen is not, you know, some people get caught up. Oh, Esther called uh, Fred Sanford a heathen and all that. But the heathen were a specific type and class of people of wicked, wretched, evil people. You know what I mean? But he say, here it's saying it, it justified the heathen, but it's talking about the Gentiles, because they're considered, they were considered like heathens, because they weren't in the most devout part portions at the time. They was thought of as that because they were scattered. Okay, but this here is saying they're being justified. Okay, that they were. You, you get what I'm saying? Not the heathen, but they were considered the Gentiles. Were looked at as that, as like an outcast, because by those that were devout. All right, Galatians three. Verse 7, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture for saying that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So that's all the nations that were scattered. Okay? So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And because if you don't believe in the Messiah, you're just like, I don't break any laws. Please, I'm going to heaven. But you don't believe, you're not a believer. Then how can you get, that's why you're not justified by your works. You know, but mainly by your faith. And then show your works unto the Lord. I mean, you know, because faith without works is dead. That's another, that's another scripture. Okay. And the law is not of faith. See that? But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree. It says there Christ was hung on a tree. And and as far as the cross, the, the cross that we, the traditional cross with the line and the straight. But uh, some have studied Bibles will talk about the cross looking like this, which actually is like a more like a cross called like a tall, a T-A-W. 
and um, which kind of kind of makes when I mean, you think of crucifixion is the most painfulest thing in you know the piercings they were all put in a certain place to cause the most excruciating pain that any man could have no man could do that but the messiah believe me and not say a mumbling word not say and take it he was spit on they smacked him they said prophesy who just hit you prophesy who spit on you he saved others he can't save himself they did all these taunts and stuff like that until the curtain was torn in two the veil was broken and he entered into the holiest of holies for us that's where you get the, you know what I mean, for God so loved the world that he gave his life. You know, that's where you get all of that. You know what I mean? So it's it's awesome. And hallelujah. Whew. Because we see how things are around here nowadays. Amen. So be it. Galatians 3, 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. Though it be out of a man's covenant, yet it be... Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed were the now to Abraham and his seed were promised were the promises made. Uh huh. He saith not and to seeds as of many. He didn't say to seeds, but as of one. And I'm in Galatians chapter three verse sixteen for you know for those that want to combat you all the time. As of many, but as of one. And and to thy seed, which is Christ, the Messiah, and through Abraham. Okay. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God and Christ, the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of none effect. For if the inheritance be of the law, it is no more of promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Wherefore, then serveth the law? Why are you serving the serving law when it was given to Abraham by promise? You mean? He promised him a seed. Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. So what is that saying? Wherefore then serveth, from Galatians 3.19, wherefore then serveth the law? It's saying, why are you serving the law like the law can save you? It was added because of transgressions. It was added because of sin. Because folk was, you know, that's why the law was made. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You know, thou shalt not steal. It was made because folk would just, so if you don't have those commandments, like we said, follow the law in, in Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, one of the last verses says, the whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. If we don't have laws in place, then it's no sin. It's no transgression. You just, everybody just wilding out, do what you want to do, steal, kill, adultery, whatever. But that's why the law was, but does the law save you? Are you, lit? is that because you're following it correctly? Will you go to heaven? That No, your faith, you have to be a believer in the Messiah, you know, but we don't do away with the law. The, the law is in place because of transgressions. Again, Galatians 3.19. Wherefore then serveth the law? Though some people just serve in the law. It was added because of transgressions. Till the seed shall come to whom the promise was made. The seed that Abraham was promised, which is the Messiah through all that lineage. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You got it. All right. Was made and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. You know, Moses. Now, a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? No, it's not. God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could give life, verily righteousness should have been given by the law. The law can't give life. The life is all through, you know, the book of the law is not, can't give you life. But the Messiah gives you life. That's why he's the way, the truth, and the life. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. See, we're talking about believers. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up into the faith. Shut up into the faith which should come there, thereafter. Now we live by faith. We just by the just shall live by faith. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus. For as many as you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That's why I gotta be baptized. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So as we started, when it says there is neither Jew nor Greek, you got to remember there was devout Jews that felt like the Jews that were scattered because there were Jews in Greece. They was all over the world. They felt like they wasn't real Jews. But it's telling you here as well as other chapters. Now, my next message, I'm going to break down Jew and Gentile. And that's in Romans chapter 11. Shalom.